Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to run an Agile retrospective exercise using GroupMap. It's a really easy and effective tool to help your team share their insights and learnings from a project and then to help decide on actions to take forward into your next iteration. Now, you really want to use GroupMap when you have distributed teams or you have a large team and you want to see the results in real time without all that manual work or where your project environment requires you to report on results um, back to other team members or stakeholders. So to create a map, you want to um, sign in and I'm just going to log in here using my Facebook account. Okay, so when I click on create a map, you can see that the Agile retrospective template is already available. So I can go ahead and um, put my project name against this activity. Then I can go here and tweak the design. Now, if you have a set of questions that you like to work with, you can edit each of the questions and its descriptions here. And you can also assign a different color to each of the tiles. You can also set rules for your exercise. So if I only want to invite people in my project team, I can select this option. But because I want them to participate without fear, I'm going to allow them to join anonymously, which means they don't have to sign in. I can decide how many ideas they can add. So I can choose a number, or in this case, I'll probably keep it as unlimited because I want as many as possible. I can also decide how they'll work. So collaboratively means that they'll see ideas from each participant um, as they're going through the activity, or I can pick independently, which means that they'll have to create their own response first, and then we can come back and turn on the collaborative option, and then they'll see the ideas from everyone else. I can also then choose how I want the best ideas to surface. So that's a voting mechanism. In this case, I'm actually going to allocate 10 dot votes to each of my team members. And they can assign those dots to ideas that they believe will help make our project a success. And finally, I can decide when the results will be shared. So when can they see the group view and the reports of the activity in real time or at a later point in time? So once I'm happy with all of that, I can create the map and you can see it's created it here. And in this section here, when they join in, I can add a few sort of comments and notes and give them a bit of context about what it is and a retrospective is, what it is about this project that we want to focus on and what the outcomes are. So when I type it in here and I go ahead and save it, when they join this session, this will be one of the first sets of instructions that they see. Great, so once I'm done here, I can go ahead and save that. And I can see that the map rules are set down here. I can change them before I go ahead and get started, but because I'm quite happy, I'm going to start inviting people in. So I'll click here and go to the invitation panel. And I can invite people in a couple of different ways. So I can just share this password if everyone's in the same room. If they're not in the same room, I can share this link. Or if I have a mailing list for my project team, I can just copy and paste those email addresses right in there and add a personalized message. Because I'm signed in with my Facebook account, I can also invite Facebook friends or post straight to my Facebook wall. Um, I'm just going to use this map password to demonstrate how the participant will join. So I'll go across here and this is the map participants screen. You can have lots of map participants. Each one of them will type in the password here and join the session. And there you go, they can see the directions that I've just created. Now they can go ahead and get started and think about the project, you know, what went well, what were the things you were really proud of and what would you like to continue doing? And they can add their thoughts and ideas just by typing, hitting enter and adding it to their own map. Uh, what could have gone better? What issues did we face? What learnings did we have? What kind of things do we want to try in our next iteration? It doesn't matter what they are. And what questions um, do we still have that we need answering to help us move forward? So as each person completes their own response, their ideas are automatically shared out with the other map participants, as you can see here. So I can look at the idea and say, yeah, I thought so as well, so I'm going to add that to my response, or, well, I'm not sure about that one, so I'm going to remove it. And I can just double click as a shortcut to add ideas to my map. And it might inspire me to add in a few ideas of my own. And as I add in my own ideas, 
it will then be suggested back to the other participants who can also add and remove it from their map. Now I can also comment on each idea by clicking on comments, selecting the idea and typing in a comment that I can post to everyone in the session. And what that will do is it will flag to the other participants that there's a comment that's been made. They can go and check out those comments on that idea and leave a comment in response. Okay, so once everyone's had a chance to participate in the session, you can now go to the group view and start allocating your votes. So you use the dot voting panel here, you select the idea, and you can see that if I'm really passionate about taking this forward into the next project, I can actually allocate more than one vote to a particular idea. And I can distribute my dots accordingly. And once I'm actually done, I'll actually be prompted to say that I've allocated all my votes like so. Now if I go across to the map participant screen, the map participants can also do exactly the same thing. So each project team member can assign their own votes anonymously. Now again, I won't do all of it because I'm sure you get the general idea, but let's say I wanted to quickly visually see which ideas have really come to the front. So I'll use this view options here and I want to see the ideas by the number of votes. So I'll just show you what happens here. If I apply the changes, what happens is that those ideas that have received the greatest number of votes will actually be shown a bit bigger as compared to the ones that haven't. So it's a real simple visualization. Now to get my reports, I can just click here and in a simple click, I can see all the ideas under each one of those headings, the number of votes that were given to each idea and I can also have a look at any of the comments that were made. And this is a report that I can print off, I can save as a PDF, or I can come back to it any time, and I can share this with my um, project team members and stakeholders. And so that's it, I can return to the map, and um, hopefully this gives you a really good idea about how you can very easily and simply run agile retrospectives with your team, no matter where they are, in real time or at any time. And don't forget to check out our other videos and if you've got any questions, feel free to let us know. Thanks for watching.